Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, I would like to show you how you can build your own Arduino Bluetooth controlled dice shaker game. Now, in my last video, I showed how to build the dice shaker, and uh, we were controlling it with the Arduino, but I just had a push button. And when we pushed the button, it made the dice shake. Now, if you haven't seen that video already, you might want to check that out um, after you watch this one. And you'll find a link to it in the description below. And if I remember, I'll put a card up here so you'll see it on the screen or you can click on it as well. But I've done a little modification and I wrote a app for the Android so that we can Bluetooth control it. And instead of just having the one push button where you've just got one dice shake setting, I have multiple different settings. So uh, like I said, you can check uh, that video out and you'll find a link in the description below. But uh, what we'll do here is uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and first I'll demonstrate it working. So I'll power it up here. And then after I demonstrate it working, we'll go and we'll take a look at the Android app, how to put that together. And then we'll also take a look at the Arduino sketch and how that's written. Now, if you don't want to make your own app and write your own sketch, I will have the app that I have um, written available on the website as long with the, the Arduino code. And um, just uh, look down again in the description below and you'll find a link to the website, which will bring you right to this project's page. And uh, you can, from there, you can find a link to download the app. And then you'll also be able to find the Arduino code and I'll also have a schematic on there on how the Arduino is wired up. <clears throat> now, as for the actual construction of the dice shaker, I already covered that in that last video. So, um, just a quick run through. It's just a vibration motor out of a game controller underneath this cup. And the cup is hot glue gunned onto the board with uh, four springs between there so it can shake. Yeah, like I said, just check that other video out and it'll go more in depth on how to construct the dice cup itself. In this video, we're mostly going to go over the app and uh, the Arduino code for how this is controlled. So let's uh, just go ahead and open it up. And you see right here, I have the little dice thing. Yeah, that pointer doesn't always work. There we go. And I got that on. Oh, I forgot to close it out before. There we go. So when we open up the, the app we have here, it wants to connect to the Bluetooth. So, of course, we just push that. Then we select our Bluetooth device, and I renamed my uh, HCO6 that we're using here. I renamed it to Dice. So we'll click on that. And there we go, connect it up. And what we have here is a short, medium, long, and random. And that's the different dice shakings. The short one, uh, if I remember right, I put that at two seconds, medium was four seconds, and the long shook it for six seconds. The random will shake it anywhere between the two and six seconds, but it can go anywhere between there. It could go like three seconds, three and a quarter, four and a tenth. So when you hit the random, it actually just generates a complete random number um, of seconds between two, and six. And when we get over to the Arduino code and also the, uh, the Android app, um, I'll explain that and show you more in depth how, how I did that. But let's just do a short shake here and demonstrate it working. That was a short shake, and you've seen it was like about two seconds. We'll do a medium. That was about four seconds. Wow, we got doubles twice in a row. I think it was fours before, and now it's threes. That's interesting. Well, let's do a long shake. There we go. Oh, fours again. Wow, that's uh, amazing. Lots of doubles there. Um, it happens. I mean, this is randomized. There ain't a real way to cheat, but getting doubles like that, I mean, it can happen, come up. All right, let's do the random. I'll be real surprised we get doubles again. Holy cow, this is just insane. I've never, I've played with this a bit since I built it, and I've never gotten that many doubles in a row. All 
There we go. Now we got a three in one. Well, I was thinking there for a moment of, hey, maybe I should go to the casino and play some craps. <laughs> All right, we'll try the long shake one more time. And then we'll hit random. All right, well, you've seen how it works. Um, oh, God, I got doubles again, double twos this time. Hey, maybe I should go to the casino tonight. <laughs> All right, um, well, as you can see, um, like I said in the last video I did, it shows how to construct the little dice shaker module itself. And the only other difference is, is I removed the push button, and I put an HCO6 Bluetooth module in here. And you can also use an HCO5, and that will work the same. You won't have to change any of the programming code, none of that. It'll work uh, just as, just the same. Um, and then, of course, I've got a logic level converter in here because the HCO6 runs on the 3.3 um, volt logic, where the Arduino itself runs on 5 volt logic. So that's why we're using the logic level converter. And I actually have a video on that if you're interested in why I'm using that. Um, just go to my channel and check it out. You'll find the video real easily. But um, yeah, you can use a resist resistors in there and uh, doing a voltage divider but um, a logic level converter works better so all right with that I'm gonna go ahead and power this off um, so what I'll do is I will fire the computer up and uh, let's see what should we go over first I think we'll go over the app itself first because then it'll make more sense when we go into the Arduino code, how it all works. But like I said, if you don't want to write your own app or assemble the code for the Arduino, you can download it off the website. So just remember to look in the description below for that. All right, well, I'm going to get the computer turned on, and I'll catch you over there in just a moment. All right. I got MIT App Inventor opened up here, so we can go ahead and check the app out. Now, as you can see on the screen here, this is what the app looks like when you first open it up. It just has the connect button, and we don't see any of the other, other uh, buttons. And that is because I am using virtual screens. That's what we call it. Um, when you try to connect to Bluetooth, um, if you switch screens, it disconnects and you have to reconnect. So what we're doing is first I have the connect here, and this is a list picker we've dropped in. And once you've clicked on the list picker, then selected your Bluetooth device, when the app actually connects to the Bluetooth device, then it, um, I'll show you here, it makes that list picker button not visible as you can see right here it is visible and what happens is when you'd click it that's what would happen it would go invisible what i'm going to do here is i'm going to display hidden components and here's the other ones the short medium long and random buttons for the dice shaker and once the uh the app has connected to the bluetooth device the uh the connect button list picker disappears and these four buttons pop up and you can use any kind of picture you want for the buttons. And I just put a spacer between them, and I used a label to do that. And I just renamed them SP1, SP2, SP3 for spacer 1, uh, 2, and 3. And I just made them a height of 10. But play around with it. If you're going to be making your own app, um, I'm sure you're going to want to customize it to your likings. But um, also, like I said before, if you don't want to mess around with this, just Go to the uh, the website, which you can find in the description below, and you can download this uh, this app. Uh, it's completely free. I ain't charging nothing for it. All right. Um, well, that's how we set that up. But let's go over to the blocks and look at how this works. Now, of course, we have um, our list picker for selecting and connecting to the Bluetooth. And of course, when the Bluetooth is connected, we're making the list picker visibility to false and then we're making all the buttons and the uh, the spacers visible now if you'd like more information about these virtual screens and how to do this i actually have a video on that just go to my channel and look for virtual screens and mit app inventor and i have a video on there on how to do this 
But uh, here's the main part. We've got when the short button, medium button, long button, and random button is pushed. And then, of course, I have one screen back press. Um, that's when you push the arrow to go back on the app. What it does is it just disconnects the Bluetooth and closes the application. But what we're looking at mainly is this right here, because you might want to actually change this around. Say you don't want it to, on the short um, button click, Maybe you want it to only go for a second. The medium, maybe you want it to go for 10. On the long, heck, maybe you want the thing to shake for a minute. Well, this is the value you change. Like 6,000 right here, that's 6 seconds. 4,000 is 4 seconds. 2,000 is 2 seconds. Now, these are the numbers you change if you want to change that value. Um, I guess I will make the AIA file available as well for this. So in case you don't want to write the whole thing yourself, but you'd like to modify it, I will make the AIA file available, and then you just go into MIT App Inventor. And um, you can open that file up and then modify this. Um, just do me a favor. Don't try selling this. Anything else you want to do with it, have fun. Just please don't try and sell it, because... I would not be very happy. <laughs> All right, now next we have the random button. And uh, what we're doing is when the random button is clicked, it's calling the Bluetooth client, and we're sending two-byte numbers. I always, in my apps um, for controlling the Arduino, I always send two bytes. And when we get over there, the Arduino only receives in one bytes, but there's a little formula on how to fix that. And when we get over to the... Uh, the Arduino sketch. I'll show you how that works. But what we're doing is we've selected the, um, I do believe that's under math here. Yep, random integer. And you pull this in, and then you select what you want. Now, I was going between 2 seconds and 6 seconds, so I put between 2,000 and 6,000. So when you click this button, it's going to send to the Arduino board a value of between 2,000 and 6,000. Now this could be 2001, 3,322, um, 5,999. It's going to be a, a round integer, but it can select anything between there. So it is a true random um, shake when you click that button. So let's get rid of that. We don't need that in there anymore. All right, well, I hope this sum so far is making sense to you. I'm not going to go into it in too much. Um, like I said, you can download the, the APK file, the actual app, and just run it as it is. Or um, I will also make available the AIA file, so you can grab that. And what you do is you just get go to MIT App Inventor, which is online. There is also an offline version you can do. Um, it's a little more complicated if you don't know about it. Don't worry about it. But you just go to MIT App Inventor, and um, if you've never played with it before, just do a Google search, MIT App Inventor 2, and it'll bring you to the website. And it's um, a browser-based application where you can make Android apps. And then you just take that AIA file, open it up, and you can modify it uh, on there. All right, um, I think we've gone over this enough, so... Um, what I'll do here is uh, I'll switch over to the Arduino sketch, and we'll run through that quick. So I'll see you back here in just a second. All right, I got the Arduino IDE opened up here. And as you can see, this sketch is pretty basic and simple. This is the whole thing right here. So let's just get right into it. To start with, um, we're just defining and uh, the shaker, that's the dice shaker, and we're defining that as being on digital pin 3. So then we can go to the void setup, and we're starting our serial. So we're doing the serial.begin, and we're running 9600. That's standard, especially for the uh, MIT um, apps. Um, 9600 is going to work fine. Then the pin mode, the shaker is an output, because of course the shaker it's the the control of the vibrating motor that's shaking the dice 
Now next we're going to go down into the void loop and if serial dot available is greater than or equal to 2 and this is that little formula I was talking about a few minutes ago if um, we're sending a 2 byte number from um, the Android app and the Arduino is receiving 1 byte numbers so what we're doing is making sure that 2 bytes are in the buffer and then we're running this little formula right here and what this does is takes those two one byte numbers and makes it the two byte number that we sent don't mess with this part of the code just leave that alone and it's going to work fine you mess with this it's not going to work all right so after that um, what we're doing is we're just delaying one second before the um the dice actually start shaking so once you push the button on the app it takes a second and then it activates the shaker now I am analog writing the shaker because I found um, depending on the size of the cup you use and I covered this more in the last video where we did just the basic shaker for my shaker um, an analog write of 175 worked good but um, if you use a different size cup just play around with this number a little bit um, 255 I do believe is the max and 0 is the minimum but I found between 175 and 200 and 175 worked great 200 just shook it a little too hard for me but you go ahead and just play with this number right here just remember to keep it analog right and remember uh, on your Arduino board as well and I covered that in the last one the, the shaker the vibrating motor needs to be connected to a PWM pin because if you put it just to a straight um, digital pin, you'll only be able to write it high or low. By putting it on a PWM pin, you can analog write it so you can set different, um, different speeds for the motor. Then what we're doing is we're doing a delay, and we're doing the VAL. And that's the number that the Arduino has received. So you see here, we're taking val equals, and that's that little formula. So that's the number we sent from the Android app. So it's delaying that long, and it's digital writing the shaker level. Um, you could do an analog write, zero, but I just, for simplicity, digital write, shaker, low. Shuts it off, it's off. That's all there is. That's all there is to this. Um, I mean, this is a great beginner's project. Um, it's a little more complicated than just the die shaker, but uh, adding that Bluetooth in there, it's still, I consider this a beginner's project, maybe a little tiny bit advanced beginner. Somebody that's, you know, done a few sketches and then go ahead and play with this, but um, I think you'll have fun with it. I'll, just a reminder, Everything can be found on the website. I've went over that a bunch of times. So just look in the description below. You'll find a link right to this project's page. So with that, I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. Um, if you found this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Uh, consider subscribing as well. So with that, have a great day. And remember, have fun building.